I was in the Modern Youth Society. He came to Cape Town. He joined us. You know, he was a slightly older man than most of us, very stiff and very formal in his suit and collar and tie, but so keen to take part in discussions about world events, about apartheid, about the occupation of Namibia and so on. And um, he, he somehow became younger when he was with us younger comrades. And we had hectic arguments about the future. Was it going to be socialist? Was it going to be capitalist? How would we get rid of the racism? And uh, I must say that Andimba became not just a comrade, but a very close family friend. Among the memories cherished by Professor Goldberg include a first-hand account of a narrative that enjoys legendary status in Namibia, a move that would catapult Namibia's agenda on the international scene, but would also ultimately see Yatoivo expelled from Cape Town. He, he would never concede the right of other people to uh, demand of him ideas that he didn't support. He was determined that Namibia would be free. And you remember when uh, Chief Kotaka was invited by the Special Committee on Namibia of the United Nations to attend in New York, and then the South African government or the Namibian administrator refused permission. And so Andimba came to me, Dennis Goldberg, to ask me to help him make a tape recording to send to the United Nations Special Committee on Namibia to protest the occupation, the illegality of the occupation, the right of the Namibia people to self-determination, and the end of the illegal occupation. And I was able to find a friend who had a tape recorder. It's not like now where everybody's got a recorder, you know, on your phone. And so we made a, a, record, a recording on one of those great big open reel tape recorders where we pl I, played, I played some music and then I spoke to a fictitious friend as though this was a letter and then we played music and then in the middle of it and Dimba recorded this message. It lasted somewhere between five and ten minutes. A message from the heart, passionate about the future of Namibia. And then we had the problem of how to send it to New York. Should we send it just as a letter which would be opened by the security police? And eventually we hit on the idea of buying a, a second-hand book. And I think it was Treasure, Treasure Island, Island that he eventually bought from a, a flea market. And we cut out a big hole in the middle of the book and put this tape recording in it and sent it as a gift to some friend in New York. And it ended up in the in the hands, I think, of Umburumbu Karina Getson, who presented it to the United Nations Special Committee. And he waved the book around, and he waved the tape around, which made international headlines of how to get a message from Namibia to the United Nations, despite the objection of the apartheid government. In close, he shares his thoughts on what it means for Namibia to lose a man of Yatoivo's caliber, as well as speaks out his condolences to the family and the nation at large. I was very pleased to be able to attend his state celebration of his 90th birthday at the Windhoek uh, Freedom Stadium, because he'd been in the wilderness for quite a long time. And I know from what he told me, he was distressed about corruption. He was distressed about enrichment. He was distressed about people claiming to have been in the movement and being heroes and awarding themselves medals when they hadn't been anywhere near the struggle at all. Right. So what's the lesson to learn? I think that my very dear comrade, Andimba Yotoivu, was a man of tremendous integrity and political principle. He wouldn't give in, he wouldn't be forced. He was charged under an illegal law by the apartheid government. He fought them as long as he could. He refused to cooperate. And I want to say first, 
I must express my sympathy to his wife, Vicky, whom I knew well, who she was part of the anti-apartheid movement in the United States, part of the Progressive Lawyers Guild. She entertained me in my visits to the States and on Demba. But I've also known Nashikoto and Mutuleni, their daughters. <laughs> 